Welcome back to Arcane Intelligence. We're doing a deep dive today uh, into a world that's kind of on the verge of a magical industrial revolution. Yeah. You know, like our own industrial revolution, but with wands and, you know, enchanted gadgets instead of steam engines. Exactly. And and one of the things that I think is really interesting is um, the idea that in this world, spells aren't just forces. They're living creatures. Cell creatures. Yeah. We're going to have to unpack that one right away, I think. It's a very strange concept, right? Yeah. Imagine a world where summoning a fireball isn't just reciting an incantation. It's more like coaxing a fiery beast from its slumber in your spellbook. So instead of flipping through, you know, a dusty tome. Yeah. You're basically managing a magical menagerie. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. It really changes the way that you think about magic. You yeah. know, each spell would have its own quirks, its own needs, and your spell book becomes less about memorizing formulas and more about nurturing these magical beings. This is blowing my mind. And wands. Yeah. What role do they play in all this? So think of a wand as like a portable brain for your spell creatures. Okay. It helps them focus their energy and it gives them a platform to interact with the world. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of explains why spells often recharge at dawn. You know, they're like plants drawing energy from the sun. Okay, I'm starting to get it now. Yeah. So where are we diving into this spell creature filled world? This uh, this deep dive is taking us to Enden. Enden. A bustling city that's a whirlwind of innovation opportunity and maybe just a touch of magical mayhem. Okay, Enden. Yeah. Paint me a picture. What's it like? So imagine Victorian London. Okay. But vi on fast forward with a healthy dose of magic thrown in. Okay. The streets are alive with people from all walks of life, you know, drawn to Enden's promise of wealth and advancement. We're talking yeah. inventors, wizards, merchants, folks just trying to get by all rubbing shoulders in a city that never sleeps. Sound like a melting pot of ambition and desperation, all fueled by this rapidly evolving magical technology. Yeah. The source material actually... Uh, Skirple's Magical Industrial Revolution mm -hmm. refers to this pace of change as tempo. Yes, tempo. It's like a measure of how quickly the world is transforming, how fast these innovations are coming. Mm. And as the tempo increases, so do the stakes. High stakes, you say? Yeah. That's where things get really interesting for a deep dive. Definitely. The source material mentions some pretty serious consequences of this magical industrial revolution, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So Enden is a city of contrasts. You have the wealthy elite living in luxury while the poor struggle to survive in overcrowded slums. Okay. A byproduct of magical innovations like instantaneous architecture. Instantaneous architecture. Yeah. So you're telling me they can just conjure up buildings out of thin air? Yeah. It's pretty wild, right? Sounds pretty convenient and potentially chaotic. It's both. Hmm. Think like portable rooms popping up everywhere, buildings merging unexpectedly. Wow. The source material mentions hidden industries operating in these conjured spaces, too. Maybe not all of them legal. It's a city where opportunity and danger are constantly intertwined. Okay, now I'm really intrigued. Tell me more about these innovations. Okay. What else is reshaping life in Enden? Well, we have teleportation circles that let you zip across the city in a flash. Sign me up. No more rush hour traffic. There's a catch, though. Oh. Frequent teleportation is weakening the barriers between Enden and a place called Elsewhere. Elsewhere. Uh, it's like a parallel dimension. A parallel dimension. Yeah. That's giving me chills. So you're saying, while you might be able to avoid a traffic jam, you might end up face to face with some sort of interdimensional monster. It, it wouldn't be Enden without a little risk, right? Really? And then there's the boom in coal and iron production. That sounds familiar, kind of like our own industrial revolution. Except here it's fueled by geomancy, which yes. is a form of magic that manipulates the earth. Okay. So iron is abundant and cheap, which is leading to a surge in construction and industry, mm -hmm. but it's also attracting rust monsters. Rust monsters. Are we talking giant metal eating slugs? You got it. Every innovation comes with unintended consequences. Oh, yeah. And speaking of consequences, the source material hints at some seriously ambitious inventors pursuing artificial intelligence. AI. That's getting a little too close to home for comfort. They have these things called programmed golems and personal calculating golems, essentially magical computers. Okay. Capable of pretty complex tasks. Yeah. But the real prize is the Omni Creator. Omni creator. Sounds a bit ominous, doesn't it? It's a device capable of creating anything. Anything. Think about the implications of that. Yeah, it can yeah. revolutionize the world or destroy it. So we got spell creatures, interdimensional rifts, yeah. giant metal eating bugs, and a machine that can create anything. And this is just the beginning of our deep dive into Enden. We've only just scratched the surface.
Okay, I'm ready to dive deeper, but before we do, let's take a moment to remind our listeners to like and subscribe to Arcane Intelligence for more deep dives into the world of tabletop role-playing games. We'll be back in a flash to explore the darker side of Endon, from its harsh legal system to the secrets hidden beneath the city. Welcome back to Arcane Intelligence. Before the break, we were talking about the you know, incredible and slightly terrifying innovations transforming Endon. But even in a city buzzing with magical progress, there's a darker side, right? Absolutely. Endon's legal system is a prime example. Imagine a world where stealing a loaf of bread could land you on the gallows that's Endon. Even minor offenses are met with harsh punishments. Wow, that's intense. And, and magic plays a role in law enforcement, too, I bet. Oh, definitely. The coppers and Endon's police force have some pretty interesting tools at their disposal. They carry these enchanted whistles that can do all sorts of things, negate, magic call for backup, even paralyze suspects. Magic whistles. That sounds more whimsical than intimidating. Yeah. Don't be fooled. These whistles pack a punch, and the source material mentions they're experimenting with thought-reading spells, too. Imagine the implications of that for personal freedom. It's like a magical surveillance state. Yeah. Makes you wonder if the benefits of all this innovation outweigh the potential for control and oppression. It's a question a lot of people in Endon are probably grappling with. And then there's the whole issue of the eight deadly sins. Yeah, the eight deadly sins. In Endon, these aren't just abstract vices. They're woven into the fabric of society. Oh, so we're not just talking about a few bad apples here. Not at all. Each sin has its own dedicated establishments and locations catering to those who want to indulge. You have gambling dens for greed, lavish brothels for lust gourmet, restaurants for gluttony, and so on. It sounds like temptation is everywhere in Endon. Oh, yeah. I guess that's part of what makes it such a compelling setting for role-playing games. Yeah. Players are constantly faced with moral choices. Exactly. Do they succumb to the allure of these vices, or do they try to resist them, and what are the consequences of their choices? The source material even provides a table of potential complications that can arise from indulging in each sin. Oh, really? Like financial ruin, social ostracism, or even magical diseases. Magical diseases. Tell me more. Okay, so imagine getting hound tongue where your tongue grows to a ridiculous length, making it impossible to speak clearly, or migratory eyebrows where your eyebrows slide around your face like slugs. That's both hilarious and disturbing. I can only imagine the shenanigans players could get into with those kinds of afflictions. Oh, absolutely. And speaking of shenanigans, we can't forget about the season. The season. What's that? For six glorious months out of the year, the upper class descends upon Endon for a whirlwind of social events. Think grand balls, exhibitions, horse races and enough political maneuvering to make your head spin. So it's like a giant party for the elite. More like a permanent family reunion with a lot more backstabbing and power plays. Intrigue and scandal at every turn. Sounds like a great opportunity for players to get involved in some high society drama. But beneath all the glamour and extravagance, there's a darker secret lurking in the shadows. Right, the catacombs. Ah, uh, yes. The catacombs is a sprawling network of tunnels and chambers beneath the city filled with danger, forgotten lore, and the remnants of failed magical experiments. It's the perfect place for a dungeon crawl, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. I'm already picturing players venturing into the unknown, encountering bizarre creatures, and uncovering ancient secrets. Tell me what kind of challenges might they face in the catacombs. Well, the layout is constantly shifting thanks to unstable magic. One wrong turn could lead to a dead end, or worse, a hidden chamber filled with some monstrous creation. Sounds like navigating the catacombs is as much about luck as it is about skill. Right. Any specific examples of creatures they might encounter. The source material mentions tunnel trolls, massive creatures that burrow through the earth and are notoriously territorial. Okay. And then there are the whispering fungus, a colony of sentient mushrooms that can drive you mad with their hypnotic whispers. Yikes. I can already feel my sanity slipping just thinking about them. But it's not all danger and despair in the catacombs. There are also rumors of lost treasures and powerful artifacts hidden within its depths. So there's a chance for great reward alongside the risk. I bet that's a tempting proposition for any adventurer. Oh, most definitely. And to give you a taste of what adventuring in Endon might be, mm. like the source material actually provides two mini adventures or adventure seeds. Okay, I'm all ears. What are they called? The first is the Bells of St. Bristow. It's a bit of a mystery involving the theft of three bronze bells from a local church. Sounds straightforward enough. What's the twist? The culprit might be bell hermit crabs, creatures that use bells as shells. Hermit crabs living in bells. That's amazing. I could see players having all sorts of fun tracking those critters down. Oh, they'll have their work cut out for them. The adventure seed hints at a partially completed tunnel, an egg chamber filled with rotting corpses, and an ancient pipe system that could flood the whole place if it rains. 
Okay, that escalated quickly. Definitely sounds like a dungeon crawl with a unique flavor. Mm -hmm. What about the second adventure seed? This one is called the biggest aspidistra in the world. Think Jack and the Beanstalk meets a magical gardening mishap. Okay, that has piqued my curiosity. It's about a simple potted plant, an aspidistra, that has grown to an enormous size due to some questionable magic. The source describes it as being 200 feet tall with a family and their dog trapped in the ruins of their house at the top. Oh no, so the players have to scale this giant plant to rescue them. That's the gist of it, but it's not just about climbing. The source provides details about the family, George, the grumpy patriarch, Doris, his timid wife, Celia, their terrified maid, and of course, Waffles, the dog players, would have to navigate their personalities, maybe even uncover the truth behind the Aspidistra's sudden growth spurt. It sounds like a delightful blend of problem-solving social interaction and a healthy dose of absurdity. Exactly, and that's what makes these adventure seeds so great. They showcase the diversity of experiences you can have in Enden, from gritty dungeon crawls to quirky social encounters. It's all about finding that balance between the magical and the mundane, the thrilling and the humorous, the familiar and the utterly bizarre. Couldn't have said it better myself. So for our listeners who might be new to TTRPGs, how would you describe the appeal of a setting like Enden? It's a world that invites you to step outside your comfort zone to imagine the possibilities, both wonderful and terrifying, of a society transformed by magic. It's a world where you can be anyone you want, a daring adventurer, a brilliant inventor, or even a humble shopkeeper trying to make a living amidst the chaos. It's a world where you can create your own story, forge your own destiny. And that's the magic of tabletop role-playing games, isn't it? It is indeed. Well, we've explored the dangers of the catacombs, the Kirks, the legal system, and even the temptations of the Eight Deadly Sins. But we've only just scratched the surface of what makes Enden such a fascinating and complex setting. There's still so much more to uncover. When we come back, we'll delve into the nitty-gritty details of life in Enden, from its unique architecture to its diverse social classes. Welcome back to Arcane Intelligence. We've been deep diving into Enden, right? Exploring its spell creatures, its revolutionary innovations, and its dark underbelly. Yeah. But what about everyday life in this city? Like, what's it actually like to walk those fog-choked streets? So that's a great question. Uh, Enden is a city of stark contrasts, okay. both visually and socially. Mm -hmm. Imagine soaring rust-streaked skyscrapers looming over cobbled streets, okay. iron roads that haven't quite figured out how to resist rust, and a skyline that's constantly changing thanks to instantaneous architecture. It's like they've mastered the magic of building up but haven't quite gotten around to the magic of rust proofing. Exactly. It speaks to the uneven progress of this magical industrial revolution, and that same unevenness plays out in the lives of end and citizens. Okay. The source material goes into fascinating detail about the different social classes. Yeah. You have the poor struggling for every scrap, right. living in the shadow of those opulent towers we talked about. Mm -hmm. Then you have the lower class, Okay. the workers who keep the city running, hoping for a bit of stability. It's like a magical reflection of our own industrial revolutions with, you know, progress and hardship. Yeah. Kind of existing side by side. And then you have the middle class, the strivers, the entrepreneurs caught between the old money and the new opportunities. Okay. They're the ones most likely to benefit from the innovations. Yeah. But also the most vulnerable to the shakeups they cause. Makes sense. They're right in the thick of it, trying to climb that social ladder while the rungs are still being magically hammered into place. Yeah. And at the top, we have the upper class. Right. Those folks probably aren't too thrilled about all this change. You're right on the money. Yeah. They've enjoyed power and privilege for generations. This magical industrial revolution is a threat to their established order. I can see them, like, clinging to tradition, but secretly investing in the latest magical gadgets just to stay ahead of the game. That's the beauty of this setting. It's ripe with possibilities for social conflict, intrigue, and personal stories. Right. Think about it. Yeah. You could have players who are part of a family business that's threatened by a new magical invention, mm -hmm. or maybe they're members of the upper class trying to maintain their status as the world shifts beneath them. The source material even mentions a legal system where certain spells are just outright illegal. Yeah. Like, what kind of spells are we talking about? Well, mind control is a big no-no. Understandably. And necromancy, of course. But even some forms of scrying, which is basically magical surveillance, are restricted. Okay. It's like they're trying to draw lines in the sand, but with magic, the sand is always shifting. It's like they're trying to control a whirlwind with a set of rules written on parchment. 
Speaking of control, yeah, how do people even get around in this ever-changing city? Do they have like magical flying carriages or something? Not quite, but they do have options. Okay. There are cabs, your typical one-horse carriages, but driven by some truly eccentric characters. I'm picturing like a magical version of a New York cabbie, but with like a talking raven perched on the roof. Then you have omnibuses, which are like horse-drawn buses that follow set routes. Okay. Not the most glamorous way to travel, but reliable. Yeah. And let's not forget the teleportation circles. Right. Those are always an option, as long as you're willing to risk a detour to elsewhere. But what about the really rich folks? How do they get around? The source material doesn't go into specifics. Right. But I imagine we're talking enchanted carriages with all the bells and whistles, mm -hmm. maybe even some personal teleportation devices for those who can afford them. Now, that's a status symbol. Yeah. But it's not all about getting from point A to point B. Is it, what do people do for fun in Endon? Well, there are those establishments catering to the Eight Deadly Sins, as we uh, discussed, but okay. there's also Loxton College, the most prestigious magical university in the world. They offer courses on everything from advanced spellcraft to the language of whales. Wait, the language of whales. Now, that's a class I'd sign up for. Yeah. And for those more inclined towards tinkering and invention, there are workshops laboratories, even secret societies where wizards and inventors gather to share their ideas and collaborate. It's like a magical renaissance, but with a lot more explosions, I bet. Explosions are always a possibility when you're dealing with experimental magic. But it's not just about personal pursuits. We have this season, of course, that extravagant whirlwind of social events where the upper class flexes their influence. Mm -hmm. And even for the everyday citizen life in Endon is likely an adventure in itself. Yeah, just walking down the street, you might encounter a street performer conjuring illusions, a geomancer reshaping the pavement, or even a rust monster snacking on a lamppost. Exactly. It's a city that's constantly evolving, always surprising, and never dull. So for anyone listening who might be thinking about running a game and end and what advice would you give them embrace the unexpected don't be afraid to lean into the bizarre and the wonderful this source material is a springboard for your own creativity use the detailed descriptions the random tables the adventure seeds as inspiration to create your own unique stories and challenges and remember this is a world where magic and technology collide so think about how those forces interact how they shape the lives of the characters and how they drive the narrative most importantly, have fun with it. Endon is a world begging to be explored and experienced. Well said. And that brings us to the end of our deep dive into the magical industrial revolution of Endon. We hope you enjoyed the journey. We encourage you to check out Skirple's magical industrial revolution for yourself and see what wonders you can uncover. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to Arcane Intelligence for more deep dives into the world of tabletop role-playing games. Until next time, keep those imaginations firing and those dice rolling.